Travis Scott, rapper, producer, Fortnite guy, PS5 endorser, McDonald's meal. I thought it'd be a fun idea to rank every song he has under his belt because I find most of them to be quite good. He's a big name in the rap game and his influence has really left a mark in the subspace of trap rap. I do understand he's a very contentious topic to discuss and I'm not here to bring him up as a person or talk about what he's done wrong in the past. I'm just here to talk about his music and his music only. Sometimes you just gotta separate the art from the artist, which is definitely something I've had to do with. But that's not the point. Today, with the anticipation for his upcoming Utopia album, I will be ranking every Travis Scott song from his Days Before Rodeo mixtape all the way to Astroworld, excluding his collab albums like Huncho Jack, Jack Huncho, and Jack Boys. I will separate the list from what I believe to be bad songs, mid songs, good songs, great songs, and eventually perfect songs with their respective background color supporting that. Okay, on to the list. Starting with Dead Last, we have <laughs> Basement Freestyle. This song is comically annoying, it's just a migraine to me. The Plan. I didn't know whether or not I should have included this one because it was made purely for the movie Tenant, but why not? It's bad. Wasted. Wasted. Despite Rodeo being a great album, I do think it has some flaws, and Wasted is its greatest one. I never got over how awkward it sounds to me. Maybe it's the flimsy flute in the background, maybe it's the boring performance brought by Travis, or it could just be the annoying Juicy J feature, but overall, I really just don't like this song. Back. Travis sounds like a 90 year old grandpa on this track, even his ad-libs have dementia. Coordinate. I don't really know what to say about this one, it's pretty boring and his rapping sounds very uninspired as if he's sleeping like on the cover. <laughs> Impossible. I am very aware that people like this song, but I'm just not people. Usually his slower tracks make me float, but on this one it doesn't at all. I feel like he's trying way too hard to be psychedelic and it just doesn't work for me. My right hand steady. A team. This song, to me, feels like it was the first draft to his first song because it really does sound like he's trying to find his sound as an artist. But this was made after Rodeo, before Birds came out, man. This is some ass. <laughs> Guidance. Travis isn't bad on this, it's really just the beat that does it for me. I feel like I'm supposed to be dancing right now, but I'm just sleeping. Alright, those songs I find to be straight up bad, like I don't enjoy listening to them. As you can see by how fast I went through those, there aren't that many in this catalog. These next ones, though, are a small step up. These next ones are alright. Like, like Franchise. This song is the definition of pure mid. I kind of get the simplicity behind the instrumental, but it's completely destroyed by MIA's flow. Young Thug is the highlight, though. Japanese, yeah. Franchise Remix. Future does help a little bit. Travis definitely knew what he was doing taking MIA off the song, but I still don't love it. Sloppy Toppy. This is just a goofy song. I can't really take it too seriously, but it's pretty fun. I can tell. The chorus is a bit jarring, but his rapping on the verses aren't bad. Backyard. Honestly, this is a pretty alright song, but its duration is what kills it for me. It can easily be two minutes shorter. That could have made it better, I think. The Ends. This is probably Travis's most forgettable song, in my opinion. Every time I listen to it, it's like hearing it again for the first time. Like, oh, Andre 3000's on this? I say, like, on my fifth listen. Flying high. Flying high. I used to love this song, but then I realized it's actually kind of an earworm and not in the best way. Toro Imoa's bridge is easily the best part of the song. Never Catch Me. The guitar in the beginning is amazing, but after the weird Alvin and the chipmunk inflections, the song kind of falls off for me. <laughs> Through the Late Night. Okay, there's no beating around the bush for me on this one. I just have to come clean, and I know no one's going to agree with me here, but... I find Kid Cudi to be a little bit overrated, and I know that's like a sin in the music industry to think that because he is genuinely one of the most influential artists in the game, like there actually wouldn't be a Travis Scott without Kid Cudi, but it just seems to me that in my own humble man's opinion, that almost every song he's on, his rapping is just the worst part of the song. On this one, The Scots, Ghost Town, Fire Metamorphosis, ASAP Forever Remix, even The Adventures of Moon Man and Slim Shady. I try to give him the benefit of the doubt, but after his latest soundtrack of an album, I just accepted that I don't mess with Cuddy like that. I'm happy everyone else does, but his music is just not for me. Okay, like I said before, those songs were subpar. They're alright, like I don't have a huge love for them, but I'm not really hating on them either. From here and on, these following tracks are good songs. Grey. This track is if Papa from Papa's Freezeria was a producer and had Travis hop on this beat. 5% Tint. The iconic, sneaky, ah beat is great. Quintana Part 2. The beat switch comes out of nowhere, but it's very welcome. Please don't wake, me up, I feel like wake up. Travis and The Weeknd collapse never miss. Okay, alright. The only other song with this many OKs is Tyler the Creator's See You Again. 
Who? What? Take a sip. Butterfly effect. Sophomore year of high school, I had to submit a song for a history assignment. I, I don't remember why we had to, but I submitted this one simply because I saw that it didn't have the explicit symbol next to its name. Let's just hope my teacher didn't watch the music video. The prayer. The nothing but auto-tune at the end of the song is ear candy that I didn't know I needed. Outside. An anti-discord mod anthem. Wonderful. Travis and the Weeknd collapse never miss. Piss on your grave. What is this song? Skeletons. Travis and the Weeknd collapse never miss. NC17. At the 358 minute mark in my IT animation, I was listening to this song while I drew that frame, so I hid the name on this guy's hat right there. Escape plan. Very basic Travis song. He follows the formula a little too much on this one, but I guess if it works, it works. Carousel. I read somewhere that Frank Ocean didn't want Travis putting his verse in the release of the final version of the song. Is that true? Can someone confirm? Lose. L. Apple pie. I always think of tree trunks from Adventure Time when I listen to this song. Pray for love. Travis and the Weekend collabs. Never miss. Yosemite. Free Gunna, man. That's all I have to say. First take. Why do people not like this album? I want someone to comment a full-fledged review of Birds in the Trap sing McKnight and give me some valid points as to why it's hated on. I want to be convinced why I shouldn't like it as much as I do. I mean, obviously it's his worst studio album when you compare it to Rodeo and Astroworld, but it's not bad. Okay, those songs were good, but that's about it. Just good. These next ones? These next ones are a step above good. These next ones are great. Mamacita. Is it just me or does this sound like Pusha T's nostalgia but slow down? Sweet, sweet. This is totally me when I eat something sweet. SDP interlude. He needs to give us the extended version now, please. Me a ball, yeah. Watch. This song is any basic rap talker's dream. Travis Scott, Lil Uzi Vert, and Kanye all in the same song. And yes, if you're wondering, it does bang. Time, no. Upper echelon. I didn't include Owl Farrell on this list because every song would have been at the bottom, but this one shining gem had made it all the way up here, so I'm including it. it Maria, I'm drunk. Man, Justin Bieber popped the f off on this song. Damn, can he match Travis and Thugger's energy? Way back. Did you guys know Uzi sampled the second half of this song to make his song prices? Follow and share this video for more fun facts. I, I wanna green like I Goosebumps. Honestly, not Kendrick's best feature, but still super iconic. The Scots. Whoa, Fortnite song. Whoa. If you attended the Travis Scott Fortnite event live, I want all of you to comment down below right now what your favorite body part is. Trip up the drink, that's weird. Rip Screw. Swaley really does go underappreciated on Astroworld. He sounds beautiful on this one. Beebs in the Trap. I can't believe Travis managed to get the god himself Nav as a feature, man. That must have been a blessing. Houston Fornication. Probably the most underrated song off Astroworld. It isn't talked about enough. It has some of Travis's best rapping on it. <laughs> Zombies. I love the undead feel of this song. It really makes me feel like I'm in a cemetery and just want to bust down a move. <laughs> Mafia. I really do hope to see a J. Cole feature on Utopia if this song and Escape Plan aren't in the final cut. <laughs> no bystanders. Every time this song comes on, I just have to start jumping. Highest in the room. I listened to this song when it came out while playing Mario Kart Mobile. Y'all remember that game? Open up that window. Antidote. This was the first Travis Scott song that I heard, and it was through a SpongeBob meme. Stop trying to be God. You hear that, Nav? Drugs, you should try it. I tweaked out to this song. Photography. I, I'm not saying the real name to this song because I don't want to get demonetized. Nightcrawler. Back in quarantine, I used to listen to this song so much non-stop while playing Arsenal and Roblox. It made me feel unstoppable. Skyfall. Adele's version is better. Number 10, Don't Play. How did Travis manage to team up with the 1975, bro? Hey, I'm not complaining. This song is a banger. Okay, we've reached the point in quality in these songs in which I'm confident in calling them absolutely perfect pieces of art. 
Number nine, can't say. I thank this song every day for blessing us with Don Tolliver. Number eight, oh my decide. My favorite half is oh my. My second favorite half is decide. Seems like the life I need is a little bit. Number seven, Astro Thunder. I won't lie to you, this was my favorite Travis song for years. I don't know what it is, but the little whistly thing in the background lifts me up. Listen to this song and you'll know what I'm talking about. Number six, Sicko Mode. Okay, before you guys call me basic for putting this in sixth place, I just want to remind you all how good this song is. I think everyone got blindsided by how big the song became. Every radio station played it nonstop every single day for like two years, and it becoming a meme didn't help its case. Like, just listening to the first segment of the song makes half the world's population laugh like... But as a song, this has to be respected as one of the most iconic rap songs from the past decade. The unexpected Drake feature that sent everyone spiraling, the three beat switches in the one song, the fact that whether or not you like the song, you already know all the words to it. Maturing is realizing that Sicko Mode is definitely in Travis's top 10 songs, whether you want to believe it or not. Number 5, Pick Up The Phone. Probably Young Thug and Travis's best collab together and easily the best track off Birds. Number four, Stargazing. This one takes me back to the rollout for Astroworld with that video of him in a shopping cart for some reason. What an intro to an album. In the city, slow. Number three, 3500. I get that some people say that can be a little bloated given the fact that it's his longest song hitting almost eight minutes, but its duration ain't a matter to me. This is probably, honestly, his hardest song to date. I used to listen to this song to hype me up at cross country meets. If I could break the max volume on my phone, I would every single time just to hear that chorus. If there's any reason that I go deaf in the future, it's because I listen to this song too loudly for way too long. Number two, Coffee Bean. Some of you might be shocked at how high this is placed, and if you are, I'm gonna need you to open your eyes! This is the best track off Astroworld and my second favorite Travis song. It's no doubt his most vulnerable and personal song by far, with him talking about fears and insecurities revolving around his relationship with Kylie Jenner and their daughter Stormy. I love everything about this song, and it serves as a perfect outro to close the album. It needs to be talked about more, because I'm not seeing it get the recognition it deserves. Okay, coming in at number one, Travis Scott's best song. What is it? Place your guesses in the comments down below right now before I reveal it. It is... 90210. I think we all saw this coming. This song is perfect. I mean, what can be said about this track that hasn't already been said by everyone else already? It's incredible. An absolute beaut of a song. The melodic auto-tune singing in the beginning, the amazing electric guitar, the beat switch, the iconic bah, bah, bah meme, the outro. Okay, I won't lie to you guys. I'm gonna be honest with you. It was a real toss-up between these last two picks for me. I almost put Coffee Bean at number one, because let's be honest, it's so perfect and underappreciated. Like in another alternate dimension, this is what the script would have been, but it just took one more listen to both songs to come to my senses. It's really close for me, but 90210 is his best song. All right, that's my ranking of every Travis Scott song. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and if you did, make sure to check out my other ones where I ranked every Kendrick Lamar song or even Tyler Creator. And if you want to see me make more content, comment down below what else I should do. I have multiple videos in the works right now, so definitely make sure to subscribe because you won't want to miss out on them. I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.